<laughs> Welcome back. back. <laughs> you said it. Yeah. <laughs> so, first things first, before we start off with anything, we just want to thank you guys so, so much for all the amazing support and all the subscriptions and comments and such lovely feedback as well. I mean, when we uploaded it a couple of days ago, we were thinking, oh my god, like, what's going to happen? What are people going to think? Um, but do you know what? People have been so nice, like such lovely comments. We've had nice messages. <laughs> People asked us if we wanted to do this maybe outside and not inside a room. This is what happens. And this is what happens. But also the other day it was um, chucking it down. Torrential rain. Yeah. Horrendous for like four days. So now we're outside and we're just going to have to deal with this situation. Yeah. So. We'll see. So today uh, we're going to be discussing the like top 10 things, maybe a couple of like extra ones thrown in there as we like go along, but um, top 10 things that you'd like to know or things that you need to do when you get to France. Um, and we've had some lovely help from our friends on our expat Facebook groups of like ideas and experiences that they've had as well. The things we're going to share now is actually really good to know right before you move to France or if you had already moved to France like a couple of weeks ago or something which is really impossible because of COVID-19 but like really helpful tips about things that you need to do or you should do when you get here. Yeah. Some of the things we're going to talk about are also related mostly to the south of France because that's where we are based um, but it, it's really different from region to region so in south of France it's pretty much like this that we're going to talk about but it may be different in like Paris or other places so. yeah so if you have like something particular or an area of France which you are moving to not necessarily the south of France let us know because we do have a lot of people like contacts contactable all over France who are more than happy to share their experiences um, so we can share them as well yeah great cool well, let's get started so number one how to find an apartment probably the most crucial thing <laughs> that you could ever think about or do um, obviously we've had different experiences so we're gonna share what it's like to find an apartment as a student and the help that you get and then also what happens if you're in employment and the help that you don't get <laughs> and how you go about it the best way um, we've also had a couple of feedback from our friends um, who have bought properties here so we can share a little bit about that um, as well and then maybe do a separate video on that if you're looking to buy a house in France as a student you get like so much better prices than for example workers or if you will get accommodation on your own and through the school also you're really like kind of like insured like if anything happens the school is in it and they will help you if it's like a French speaking um, landlord and so on so for me it was really easy the price was really low as well so I paid 580 and uh, most of my friends actually paid five, around like 500 to 580 as well but for me, like a really good tip is like if you're coming here to study and your school can help you with accommodations, send them an email like I did. Like I said, I want to live alone. I want a apartment really close to the beach and I want a balcony. And you got it. I got it. <laughs> so yeah, definitely ask the school if you have any preferences. And I moved into the um, apartment. The first day I moved in, I had to give 500 euros to my landlord. And then I had to give the rest of the 80 euros to my school as a, um, how do you say? I had to give 80, okay, if I, I guess the school took 80 euros. And obviously I had to pay 580 extra as the monthly rent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, how am I going? As a worker with employment, um, for me, it was a slightly different experience. Obviously, I mentioned in the last video that I stayed with friends until I can find my own place. Um, and then what happened was is that we were looking on um, quite a few different agency websites, which we can include below. Um, and uh, then we also found this website called Enjoy Nice. Um, and basically they do like holiday rentals but they also do long term rentals as well and they have various different properties on there um, and they were really good to us um, the only thing is is about being an expat not necessarily you find the best deal um, so it is easier if you do some research first before you move here um, I obviously didn't really research before I came and I just took the plunge and I just tried to figure it out when I arrived um, so I definitely recommend you doing some research. Um, for me, I had to pay 
um, one month's um, rent equivalent to the agency as a fee. Then I had to pay another two months rent um, as a deposit. So they do it as like a holding deposit, similar like what they do in the UK, just in case you have any damages or anything when you move out. Um, so they do that. Um, for a two bedroom apartment, which I first moved into, we were roughly paying about 1,200 a month. But the good thing is, is which is different to the UK, is that this accommodation had full Wi-Fi, included your gas, electric, water. So all of those like utility bills were all included, which was a lot easier. I know like back in the UK, when you have your rent, you have all of your utility bills on top, um, and it can depend on when you live. So it can be a bit difficult. But with this, it's a price all included, and you also get a cleaner if you want as well. So that was quite nice. And then in February, I moved from my two bedroom apartment into my own place and that had a separate bad, bad and that had a separate, <laughs> oh God. and that had a separate bedroom, um, which was really nice. It was a really nice thing. Um, and that cost a roughly between 850 to 900 euros a month. So it is still quite more expensive than a student accommodation, but they are nice, they are clean, they're well kept, and they have all the things that you need in there as well. So that's really nice. Um, another thing for me, which is a big thing, um, you need to make sure that you have content insurance. Um, I personally have my insurance with um, a place called Homebrella. Um, so I can share the link below as well. And they give you quite reasonable prices for insurance. Um, but also make sure that you're covered against damages, theft and all that sort of stuff. So that's a really big thing. So then if you are looking to buy a property in France, um, we've had some comments from our friends on the expat groups um, saying that they recommend visiting a property expo in your home country and doing a lot of research online before you purchase a property in France. Obviously, when you're traveling, it's easier to be able to come and view the property. Um, but with the travel restrictions at the moment, I'm not sure how that easy that's going to be. Um, so definitely, definitely do your research on that and make sure that... Um, do your research first. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's talk about insurance. We need to do number two. Number, number two. two. Insurances and being an auto entrepreneur. It's a big Which one. Which is pretty much <laughs> like the hardest thing ever. Yeah. Like being a student, I didn't have to deal with a lot of things because I had my accommodations from school, I had my insurance from school, everything like that. But as soon as I was not a student anymore, adult life. <laughs> and that was hard. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, auto entrepreneur is basically like if you have your own company if you have your own business in france yeah like you're self-employed so we call it like self-employed back in the uk yeah um and then you set up as either a limited trading company or something like that so that's basically the same sort of thing but in france um i did mine a different way to you because i got a bit confused <laughs> yeah it can be a bit tricky because it's all in french like the way i did it was my co-workers helped me um, but also when I tried to do it myself I maybe could have done it myself because I had this translation program on my computer like every time I'm on a French website it automatically translates everything to English I'm not quite sure how I managed to do that but <laughs> if you know how to do it it's really helpful because auto entrepreneur is like I said all in French and it can be really tricky when you have to like choose what kind of work you're doing and then like what categories it's in and then sometimes if you're like depending on what you're gonna do you have to go certain courses you have to take courses to be able to get the certification and those courses they can be around like they can cost you money depending on what you're doing but for me for example what I chose what in, like in marketing uh, that was free so but it took a while and um, yeah but you can get professional help as well mm. I don't speak that much French I like know enough to get by um, but reading paper forms and things like that like that are all in French it got quite confusing for me um, so I went through a company called Invoicery um, and basically what they do is they create your company for you they manage your invoices so you can invoice out to companies to get your payment um, they manage your social security which is really really helpful um, and then they also help you to declare and um, sort out your income tax at the end of the year as well. 
Um, Sophie, who actually works for Invoicery, really, really is helpful. Um, and she helped with a lot of all the legal paperwork and questions that I kind of like started to think of like as we were going along. Um, so I can put the website below because that might be something that could help you as well. Um, so that's what I did. You get the forms uh, through the post within two weeks and then you get your social security number so you can start applying for your card for town and things like that. Yeah. So it's really, really helpful. When you get an auto entrepreneur, like when you come to France and you want to have your own business or say self-employment, when you apply for that, you will automatically get a social security number. And once you have your social security number, you can start applying for insurance. And the way insurance works here, it's a bit different from what I'm used to. Mm -hmm. Because as soon as you have your social security <laughs> number, you are able to apply for something ca called carte vitale. So when you go to the doctors here in France, and you have your carte vitale, like I think a visit is like 25 euros and your carte vitale might actually cover that whole thing right so the government pays for you but sometimes for like maybe dentists or other appointments in the doctors like that may cost more the carte vitale can cover up to like 60 to 70 percent so that means that when you're after this appointment whatever you go you have to pay the rest of the 30 like 40 30 percent yourself and sometimes that can be a lot to cover that you have to get um, another insurance on top of it and um, like you have to go through an insurance company and I pay for example uh, for 16 euros a month to cover 100% and that covers also my dentist appointments <coughs> and so on and if you're a pregnant woman for example and you want to give birth here in France it's good to add an additional insurance on top of it and that will cost you a little bit more I think around like 20 euros a month or something for me, um, it's slightly different, so I have got a global health insurance because I travel quite a lot with my work, um, so I like to have full coverage in every single country. Um, so my global health insurance is a lot more than that, it's about 120 euros a month, um, but that covers <laughs> everything. Um, and it's even got a life insurance policy on there as well. So I went through nowcompare.com um, and I'll also include the links below as well so you can have a look at that. Um, and basically what they do is they compare different quotes from different companies depending on your situation, whether you travel, whether you go to different countries or if you're just in one country. Um, so they really help you and guide you on the best decision that you can make as well. So that's really cool. So another, another important thing, not a point, but something that you really need to bear in mind, any paperwork that you get, you need to keep copies of, um, electronic copies, you can't have enough copies basically, like you never know when you're gonna need them and you could be caught in a very sad situation where you need the copies of your uh, documents, so. Another thing, like really important to say about the insurance, like it's really good to have a French insurance if you're deciding to stay in France for more than three months and if you're not studying or you don't have any other student, like yeah, student insurance for example. Yeah. So if you're planning on staying here longer, definitely get an insurance if you don't have any other insurance like Lauren has. So to become a resident in France, obviously you have to start applying for it if you're planning on being here long term. Um, for me at the moment, obviously there's a couple of Brits who are going to be watching this and with Brexit um, they are opening an online portal in July so you can upload all your information. There is a lot of paperwork but we'll also include that below as well because um, I think it's too long to go into at the moment but if you have any questions about that please do let us know. Okay, that went better than I thought. <coughs> okay, ready? Number three. <laughs> looking for jobs so as you know um, before I moved to France I applied for a lot of jobs and I got quite lucky um, so to speak but some good hints and tips on what you can do when you're looking for a job in France a lot of people in France they use LinkedIn um, and I find that especially with my job as well to be able to connect with new people LinkedIn is crucial you need to make sure that you have all of your details included on there about your past experiences and your work experience and also to have a summary of yourself as well as a person it really really helps um, you need to make sure that it's clean precise and make sure that you're approachable on there as well it really helps um, I can't stress that enough to be honest it's helped me wonders really <laughs> yeah. you may need some knowledge in French yeah it may be a little bit hard to find a job um, without knowing any French at all 
So it also depends on what type of job you're looking for. Like I know, for example, in finance sector and stuff like that, you you need to know French. And uh, it's really rare. I mean, in Monaco, it might be some where you only need to know English, but it's really rare to find like big girl, big boy jobs without knowing any French. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. But if you look for jobs like, for example, in bars or something to do like when you're not studying or something like that, like bars, stores, like clothing stores and stuff Tall like that. Tall guys and yeah, things like You don't have to know so much. Although your CV might need to be in French sometimes. Yeah, so they have a particular way of how they want to have their CVs uh, written and produced. Um, so as Shema said, if you are going to look for bar work or work in a store, it's much, much better to approach these companies in person yes. and deliver your CV so they can actually see you as a person and see what your personality is about, really. Also, put your photo on it. Yeah. What was it about phone number as well? Oh, yeah. So this is a theory. So I don't really know if this is true, but one of my friends, she was looking for a job like a lot of jobs here in France, but she didn't really get any answers. It was the same thing for me, really. I applied for so many, but nobody really called me. And that was because I had a Swedish number um, and she had that as well. But then she changed her number and she told me, like as soon as she, she changed her number to a French number, people start calling her and like actually give her a response because we think, I don't know. They take you more seriously. I think so, yeah. I think yeah. it's a cat. Yeah. Do we have um, some more water? You have water, yeah. No. Oh, no, I'm we wine. don't have wine. No. Um, and then also, just to add on the back of that, there's also Facebook uh, groups as well, which are really helpful. And there's one called French uh, Riviera Jobs and Services, where people post um, if they have a job like opening or if they're looking for work as well. So it's quite helpful. And we'll include the link below on that one. If you're moving to France, or if you are in France and you're looking for something really nice, like, oh my God, if you're, lo if you're looking for a SIM card, <laughs> basically SIM card. <laughs> um, I will really really recommend free Mo mobile free mobile they are really good a lot of like I didn't research much really I just took what my friends had but after hearing other people that had like orange or like this other thing I can't really pronounce so there are so many <laughs> telecom companies uh, free is the best one and it's and really like easy it. to get as well super easy you can find like in any almost in any like tabac like where you can buy cigarettes and stuff and any small shops. Maybe we can do a video on that as well so we show you how to do it. Let us know. Comment if you want to know more about <laughs> this. Yeah. Number four. <laughs> four. Okay, so meeting new people. Touched on briefly about Facebook groups and to be honest, when I first moved here I never really used Facebook. I was more of an Instagram kind of person but it's really helpful. They have so many different groups like to do with apartments, with work, things that we discussed previously, but also like support groups as well. So we've got a couple that we're part of. So there's expats in France, um, working on the French Riviera, living on the south of France. And basically you can just ask anything in there. Obviously you have like group rules about posting about blogs and things like that, but you can ask questions if you are unsure. People really like are helpful and they respond super quick. So yeah. don't worry if you're unsure on anything, but we'll post some of the links below that we're part of. Can you look like so you wanna be here? Okay. <laughs> You can search for Facebook events on so, Facebook. Yeah, they have them like in all different areas, and you can see like ones that are closest to you and like the dates and things like that. So you can join. Some of them are free. Sometimes you have to pay like a fee, but um, they're That's relatively great. quite quite cheap. So. <laughs> there are 163 nationalities in South of France. Yeah. Where is the camera? Here. South of France. <laughs> And there are 80,000 foreign people, so if you think that you're not going to find anyone, you're wrong. You're really wrong. You are not alone. You're There's not a lot of people in the yeah. same boat as you. Number five. So now we're going to talk a little bit about like how important it is to actually know French. Um, is it important to know French? Some say yes, some say no. Obviously, I personally think when you're in another country, you should make the effort to learn at least a couple of phrases to get you by. Yeah. I mean... The, a lot of people, French is probably one of the hardest languages to learn. Um, it is really hard. Yeah. yeah. Especially for me, I think. No. It, it, it's taken a long time. <laughs> but, I mean, it's really good to, like, if you don't know any French, you probably know about, like, bonjour. Yeah. Bonsoir. Uh, yeah, things like that. Because here in France, it's actually really, not, 
I wouldn't say important, but it's a really good thing. Like when you meet someone in the elevator or like when you meet someone in the hallway or something, even on the street sometimes, if you're like alone and you're crossing someone, you say hi, you say bonsoir or bonjour. Depending on what time of day it is. As After well. five o'clock, it's bonsoir. And before that, obviously, it's bonjour. <laughs> there are a lot of apps out there to help you learn a little bit of these phrases before you come here. I personally use an app called Babbel. Um, so you can sign up for like a six month or 12 month subscription and I personally find it a lot more helpful than I did with Duolingo and also the Google Translate app so this one which will include a thing okay wait hold on the screenshot so you can see that you can I'm not that I'm not a I, if I can do it I'll do it okay. So on Google Translate app, um, it's actually really helpful. So you can hover your camera over a piece of French written like text um, and it translates it into your language um, and you can pause the translation so you can read it. Really helpful. It also helps you to have a conversation as well. So there's like a mic setting on there. So you can speak in English, for example, say I'm speaking French to Shema and um, you can kind of understand each other and it translates it for you. So another thing about learning French, I think it's how consistent you are, would yeah. you say? Consistency is key and also I would say watch Netflix. There are like a French section actually on Netflix, I discovered that the other day. So you can hear it in French and then have the subtitles in whatever language that you need. Getting to know your area. Yeah, six. Oh my god, number six. <laughs> So if you're moving to south of France, or if you're moving to Paris, and you have a certain address you're going to, it, it's really nice to like, can do a research about that area. Um, obviously, I already knew about, not obviously, but I knew about south of France already. I knew where I was going. So I started to, like we talked about before, started to get like into some Facebook groups. And I also studied a little bit about like what to do in that area and so on. It's really easy, really. Um, you can find a lot of like useful things uh, on Airbnb, for example. Uh, on Airbnb there are a lot of like things like experiences you can do like cooking, bicycling, like depending on where you are, like even swimming, yeah, anything. And the next important thing about getting to know your area is getting to know the times of the stores. So for me, when I first moved here, um, I didn't realise that some of the shops would be closed on a Sunday. So in the UK, obviously our trading hours are between 10 and 4. Um, and then I was expecting to go and do my shopping on a Sunday and then I couldn't and I was devastated and I had to sell for pizza Yeah, which isn't too bad <laughs> but you can like get pizza. uber eats really easy anytime a lot of the restaurants are closed on Sundays too but you still have to like you will not be hungry on a Sunday another thing is that here in France you can't buy cigarettes everywhere you only can only buy them in certain stores and you will see like a big sign and it says tabak on it looks like this and it says tabak. <laughs> <laughs> number, number seven, seven. all right so uh, a little bit about like traveling around in france it's really easy in my opinion i've never really had any problem with it i know i've seen people having a lot of problem with it lauren and i we take the yeah, train take really train. often anywhere really it's really easy you go to the train station, there is a box, you go to that box, you click English, and then you say where you're going, which hour you're going to take the train, that's it. Yeah, I mean, what you do have to like think about is that in France there is a lot of strikes and there are, can be a lot of delays, but to be fair, we haven't really experienced so much of that. No, yeah, strikes we've been um, experiencing, I did last summer, it was a lot, like... I had to work because I was a tour guide at that time. I had to work. I had to go like 20 minutes away from here and it was really hard. So, but luckily there were buses and there were also a couple of people like that was helpful to like, you know, share a car yeah. or something, a taxi maybe. So we'll uh, go through a couple of like the best apps that you need to have when you live in the south of France as well, which have really helped us. Yeah. Um, and then we'll also include them below as well. So for the train, um, if you're working and you're commuting, so for us we commute from Nice to Monaco and back. Um, we did I say that right or not? Yeah, yeah, we go from Monaco to Nice. Okay. Do I say Monaco to Nice or Nice to Monaco? So we commute between Nice and Monaco for our work. Um, so obviously we take the train. So it's actually a lot cheaper to buy a monthly ticket 
um, and you can get those on the app, so the SNCF, um, and they give you your train times as well. So you can create an account, you can buy it online, you can have an e-ticket. Much more easier than going to the machine in the train station, which usually has a queue like two miles long. Uber works really well here in the country as well. I never have problems with Uber. They're really nice cars and really nice. Oh, the best way to learn French is also talk with your Uber driver. They're really, really helpful. Oh, be. another really, really important thing to do, like even if you're like tourist or new here, whatever. Um, when you buy a ticket from the train station, always, always make sure to validate your ticket. You will see people like how they validate it. Like when you have your ticket in your hand and you didn't, obviously if you didn't buy it from your phone, there is a thing. It looks like this. Hold on. <laughs> you need to like... And it's yellow. You can't miss it. <laughs> because if you don't do that and they have a control on the trains, you can get a ticket even though you just bought a freaking ticket. Don't do that. Great. Validate your ticket. Validate your ticket. Number seven. Okay. One sec. Number seven. <laughs> <laughs> Money and credit cards. So. Okay, so really quickly, I use, I didn't use French bank or anything ever. Like, I never had a French bank account. I didn't even have a, any other bank account than my Swedish one. But when I started working, I kind of like had to change and I didn't want to do a French bank account. So like, I don't have any experience with that. But what I would really, really recommend for other expats or people moving to France is Revolut, Revolut Bank. Um, most of the time here in France, you use, I mean, there are a lot of places you can use a credit card, like you can use a card to make payments. But sometimes like some of the landlords, for example, but also other stores may not take cards. Or, for example, if you're buying something under the under like 15 euros, you might need to pay in cash. So you have to take money out more often um, than maybe in other places. Like in Sweden, we never take out money. Um, so Revolut doesn't charge you for taking out money from the bank, from the um, cash point. Cash point. So um, other ones which are quite good. So you have TransferWise and Monzo. I actually use all three. <laughs> I have a Revolut, TransferWise and uh, Monzo. So I usually use my Monzo just because I get paid still in pounds um, and then it allows me to transfer it out into different um, currencies which is really helpful. Um, with some of them you will find that it has like a cap on there like of how much you can spend so you can like um, have the app on your phone you can track how much you're spending you can change your pin which is really helpful if you forget it like me um, and you can also control your finances as well so you can approve or decline a transaction if you've done it online really really helpful and you it can, can go in any currency you can do that with Revolut as well but yeah you can take a look at them we'll link everything down below yeah take a look at these um, banks um, and see which one you like the best but I will really prefer Revolut even like if you're not really like going to live here longer than maybe like three four months you can use Revolut everywhere it's really good for travelers yeah yeah last but not least safety in France so is France safe is France safe can you sit like properly okay okay one sec <laughs> so for my sisters out there that's like coming to France um, I would say be careful, definitely be careful. Um, there's a lot of boys out there, predators, <laughs> trying to get you. <laughs> um, stay away. Stay away. No, but I've been like, I know a lot of girls have experienced a lot of comments from men, any age. Yeah, from any like time eleven as well. to like seventy year old men, commenting your body, and your soul. <laughs> No, but it's, sometimes it's really hard. Yeah, but what I would say is probably just be um, aware of your surroundings and make sensible decisions. So if you don't have to walk alone at night, don't walk alone. Get an Uber. You also do have pickpockets on the trains. Um, <laughs> and they do say um, on the speaker a lot to be aware of pickpockets. Obviously, this is in French, um, but you will get the gist of it when you listen to the speaker as well. So overall though, like my experience with all this has been okay, like it's not hard to live here. It's not like 
impossible to come here alone and deal with all this. Yeah. I definitely felt like I really, really grew up, even though it doesn't, you can't notice it, <laughs> but I really did grow, grow up when I moved here. It is very testing, yeah. and I think you need to have um, a bit of like strong will yeah. um, and a hunger to succeed in things. Yeah. And obviously in life, like, you know, things like kind of get in the way and it's an obstacle that you need to get past. But if you have that like strong strive to be the best that you can be and to make something of yourself, um, yeah. then go for it. Do it. You should do it. So if you're sitting there and you're wondering, <laughs> should I really go and like study in France? Should I really move to France? Yes. Do it. <laughs> Just do it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so also as well. So no. Hold on. So also as well, we're going to be also uh, as well. Okay. <laughs> Um, just quickly we wanted to also add that um, we have been in touch with a few different expats in France from different countries and all like different nationalities who are wanting to share their experiences in France to help you guys um, so over the next couple of weeks we're going to be doing a few different interviews um, which we're really excited about actually um, so that we can get like different perspectives and um, things that we haven't covered on today's topic as well so if you have any questions, I already got a couple of questions on my Instagram. Please let us know. Send us a DM on Instagram and or in the comment section below. Oh my God, I sound like a YouTuber. <laughs> <laughs> Who are we? <laughs> All right, thank you so much, guys, for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. That would mean a lot to us. Now I understand why people say that, like yeah. for the first time ever. Please subscribe, and like, and comment. <laughs> Bye. Bye.